Hey everybody out there, my name is Sean Joy from Tech Raptor, aka Dragonix from YouTube, and this is a little bit different for Tech Raptor. At Tech Raptor, we get a lot of news that comes around the feed, but a lot of the people who write for Tech Raptor, you know, they have other jobs, they have a lot of, you know, other responsibilities, and thus a lot of news falls through the cracks. We also get a lot of indie games that come on the market that fall through the cracks as well. This is sort of me trying to sort of fill a hole here. So I'm going to play an indie game and then give you guys some news while, you know, attempting to give you some idea about the what the indie games are all about. So you've probably seen this one before, but this is Ziggurat, and it just had a major update on Steam today. So I wanted to take a look at it. For anybody who doesn't know, it's a first-person shooter. It is a roguelite in nature, however, and it is you as a wizard. You have different abilities and different spells that you can throw at your enemies, different wands, things like that. You attack enemies and try to get to the end of the dungeon in question. Now, there's a lot of new content in the new update for Ziggurat. This is its 12th update, and the biggest one being there's a daily challenge now. So, a new challenge will appear every day. It's a specific starting conditions and dungeons for everyone to test themselves against. You only get a single attempt per day, and I mean, that's the attempt that you're seeing right here for me. Hint, it doesn't go so well. But not only that, there are new enemies here. There are some new green peppers and yellow chili peppers. I know, peppers, weird, but it fits the game, actually. There are killer carrots, by the way. Uh, new boss, there are new playable characters. This is the battle mage, which seems to have a new mechanic where his mana drains over time. As you see on the right-hand side there, that is his mana bars. So your regular wand doesn't use mana in terms of like it's regenerable. Yes, you could run out of it, but you will naturally regenerate it. On the other side, those other ones like that wand that you saw right there uses that green mana. Those are mana pools and you can only use them if you have mana in those pools. This guy's mana drains over time. So that makes it a little bit more necessary to use your mana rather than hoard it like you can with other characters. There are new perks, new modifiers, and I'll get into a little bit more about the game, but I also want to talk about some other news while doing this, so let's get right into it. Now, to say that the guys over at Amplitude Studios have been a little bit busy over the last couple days may be the understatement of the week at this point. Now, if you don't know who these guys are, these are the guys behind games like Dungeon of the Endless, the roguelike dungeon defense game, and that is actually coming to the iPad um, with an announcement that they made in the last couple of days. So keep a lookout for that if you're looking for sort of a, uh, a difficult yet fun roguelike in a dungeon. I know it's another roguelike like that, but it was a pretty good one. It's a little bit different from the others. But not only that, but not only that, they are behind the Endless Space series, the 4X strategy game in, in space. Well, they are behind that one, and of course they're behind the second one. They've announced Endless Space 2. There is a website and a video along there that I will put in the description below for you guys to take a look at. Endless Space was a really good um, 4X game, and it was an interesting one at that. So you should take a look at that. It is going to get a little bit more information in Gamescom, but we should take a look out for it because that strategy game is probably one of the better ones I've played in the last couple of years. Now you'll notice I've gotten into this lava room. This game also has hazard rooms. You usually have a reward at the end of it, and you can notice that I'm having a little bit of trouble with navigating it. Certain jumps are a little bit too far for me, but you see there's a little treasure chest at the end there. It will get me a perk. Perks in these games are sort of what you get like when you level up, but these are little things that will help you along. Like here, I got my Wrecking Ball skill to level two, which means that if I break things with my magic, I will actually regain health. And that will come a little bit later on. As you see, I basically break a bunch of bookshelves and books to, you know, recover a little bit of health. There are not there are potions in this game, but they drop very rarely, although you can affect that with the perks. So health is a very big resource in this game because you need to manage it because it doesn't come easily. Now, Terraria just in the last month got a 1.3 update. It included a lot of new detail and a lot of new features, but 505 Games and the creator developer Andrew Spinks from Relogic Studio aren't done there because they announced today that the game Terraria is coming to the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U in early 2016. 
It will also feature unique platform specific features. Now it will use the touch controls, obviously. I mean, that's sort of the gimmick of the 3DS and the Wii U, but it will also allow for people to have local Wi-Fi support for the version of the 3DS for up to four friends. Now the Wii U will allow for eight players to play online together, but they will also be able to enjoy four players split screen using the classic Wii remotes, which is nice. I like the fact that they're including a local co-op version in this portion. A lot of times you don't see that local co-op being added even though it makes a lot of sense, but here it makes a lot of sense and I really enjoy the fact that they're adding this. Now, I'm not a big Minecraft or Terraria person, but even I am a little bit intrigued, even though I'm a majority PC player, to see it come to the Wii U. It makes a lot of sense there for the demographic and for the people who are looking for a game that maybe like Minecraft, but just a little bit different. So you should expect that quarter one 2016. Now, 505 Games wasn't done with the announcements that they had today. They actually confirmed that Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, is going to come to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One via digital download on August 12th, followed by a retail release on September 4th in Europe specifically. Now, if you haven't played Brother A Tale of Two Sons, I would recommend that you pick up this version of the game if you're a console player. If you're a PC player, obviously pick it up on a sale or things like that. It is a really wonderful story. It is a different kind of game. You know that the game is good when somebody like Total Biscuit says it's one of the best game experiences he's had in a long time. It is worth your time. It is worth your money. It's definitely something that I would look forward to if I didn't have a PC of reasonable power. I'd make a PC Master Race joke at this point, but eh, okay, whatever. Um, as you see here, I'm still playing a, through a ziggurat a little bit. Just to add a little bit more detail about the game, it is randomly generated every time time in terms of the main mode, and you have a lot of different characters and character types. Again, a lot of them may have a specific mana type that they are really accustomed to, like, you know, green, blue, or orange. The weapons are a lot different from each other. As you saw with, like, the third, my third weapon there, it is more of a sort of a spam weapon. You'll get things like the alchemy weapons, which are sort of, like, almost grenade-like in, in essence, or you may get some homing missiles with their second, the blue kind of portion. So there is a lot of strategy involved here, and it, you really have to be very specific about what upgrades you take per character. It does really warrant a lot of playthroughs, and one of the things that I would say about the game in terms of negatives from before was the fact that over time, like the, the variety of enemies just, you know, they sort of fell apart. But they've been adding more content, new enemies and things like that, even a new boss in this version. So it may be even worth a, a bigger look than it was before. So it is interesting to see them, you know, add more content even so far after its release. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of different news from the gaming world in terms of tick Kickstarter. And some good games come out of it and some things that, you know, are a little bit questionable. But... On the other hand, we've seen good games like Wasteland 2 come out of it, the post-apocalyptic RPG. Now, for PC users, that's great, but for the PS4 and Xbox One users, they didn't get a chance at this point to play it. Well, that's going to change a little bit. Wasteland 2 Director's Cut is actually coming to the console generation Xbox One and PS4 on October 13th in North America. It will be playable at Gamescom, so keep that in mind, but it will be, for those who are going to it, there will be a deep silver booth in Hall 9, so take a look for it there. But what do they mean by Director's Cut? Well, they are improving a bunch of things here. They will be adding overhauled graphics with sort of fully redone character and level art. They will be expanding the voiceovers with what they say is tens of thousands of lines, and new features to make it the definitive version of Wasteland 2. Th now. Those who were playing on the PC are like, are we going to be getting it? Yes, you will be getting the update uh, via the PC, and it will be coming out the same day as the Xbox One and PS4 versions, so you will be getting the definitive version at PC users. It is another, uh, a classic, I don't want to say classic, a post-apocalyptic RPG that's definitely worth your time and definitely worth you know, you putting a bunch of hours into it, at least in my opinion. So take a look for that PS4 and Xbox One owners. They will be adding a whole new control scheme because of the whole console portion of it. So it'll be interesting to see how they go about that. Now, as you saw there, I ha there is a boss fight at, at the end of every dungeon in Ziggurat. And usually it is a bigger enemy or some completely different enemy. It's 
back and forth on whether or not it's a big enemy or not. But every time you defeat a dungeon, you get go on to the next one, and the next one may have something that is more useful right out the gate for you. So for example, you see here, I grab the Viper Fangs. It's a new weapon for me. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a weapon type that you ha haven't gotten already, but the idea here is, is that now you have more to your arsenal at this point. Now, one of the launch titles for the Wii U was Zombie U by Ubisoft. Again, you haven't seen a lot of big third-party publishers go to the Wii U, but that was a big one of their and it was all right. It was, you know, a reasonable game. However, it looks like they are finally bringing it over to the other consoles. Zombie, which they've sort of, you know, cut off the U, will be coming to the Xbox One and Windows PC on August 18th, 2015, as well as coming as a digital download for the PlayStation 4. Now, what's interesting about this is that, is how they will change it in the end, because again, I think Ubisoft had a good idea with some of the stuff they put into the Zombie U sort of, you know, formula. Like the idea that you, in checking your backpack, zombies could sort of sneak up on you and you had to pay attention to the second screen in terms of, you know, using your menus and things like that. Also using the camera and things like that within those menus. Now that it's coming to the other platforms, what they will change about that, I'm not exactly sure at this point. Um, there's not a lot of detail behind how they're going to change this at this point. Now, for those who don't haven't played the game, it is basically a zombie survival game. The biggest sort of feature about the game is sort of the bag out system. You get a randomly generated character and you have a bag that has all your tools in it. Now, unlike other zombie games or survival games, okay, a good amount of survival games have a sort of a death mechanic, but this bag is important. This has pretty much everything you need. If you die, that bag stays where it sort of fell apart at that point. So you have to go and get it. And with all the supplies that you need, you really need it, like, you know, guns and things like that. You can keep some back at the sort of home base that you've got, but you really have to go get that bag again because it's, I don't want to say absolutely necessary, but it's absolutely necessary. Um, you also have to sort of kill your old affected person, which was always sort of comical at that point. But It'll be interesting to see how they transition it over from a perspective of the gameplay element. And honestly, it, it is interesting that they decided to do this. The fact of the matter is, Zombie U didn't do that great. And it did sort of lose a lot of momentum towards the sort of halfway point of the game. It just didn't do enough for me to really um, keep my interest over time. So... Again, it is not my cup of tea, but if you're looking for a zombie game, it may be your cup of tea at this point. So, again, take a look out for that. We'll, we'll hopefully have more news as it comes along. Now, I did cut out a little bit of the gameplay here be only because of the fact that I don't want this to be a 30-minute news video. I'm sorry. I can't keep that up. Um, a little bit more about Ziggurat. Uh, its random generation is pretty good in terms of it does feel like a unique sort of run every time through. And... In particular, the different weapons and sort of choosing which weapons that you want and which weapons that you need sort of need to sort of avoid for that character is always been interesting. I like the perk system. It does give the game a little bit of life. Now, music-wise and visual-wise, it isn't the greatest. Now, as you see right here, again, the music, I you know, there's nothing really sort of standout-ish by this, but you're here for the gameplay. And again, the gameplay's controls are solid, the firing mechanisms is solid, the gameplay's frame rate, it does have like a, a, a tiny bit of a performance issue here and there, but nothing that is like horribly noticeable over time. And frankly, it's a game that hasn't really, I can't think of another game that's very much like this in, in the sense of a, being a wizard, being a, in a first person perspective, in terms of this sort of random generation. This may be sort of a unique mechanism. We've seen other games like this in like Delver for like the first person perspective in terms of a roguelike, but nothing very much like Ziggurat. So again, if you were looking for a game like this, I will also include a link to a more descriptive video or, you know, a different video here that I did on my channel, but you know, keep that in mind. And for the final little tidbit of news today, for those who own Prison Architect, it, yes, it's a game that's been in early access for a significant amount of time, but they've added another release to um, Alpha 35, which adds a reasonable amount of features to it. One of the biggest ones I would say is the gang leader feature. Basically, the idea here is, is that a legendary prisoner will come and arrive. They will be the gang leader at that point and they will immediately consume the control of the gang. 
There will be a leadership hierarchy, and basically they can promote gang members to lieutenants. Now, gang members are fiercely loyal to their leaders. They'll become angry if the leader is punished in solitary or in lockdown, and if the gang leader is killed, they'll immediately try to start a riot, which is interesting. Now, again, I have not played the game, but reading some of these notes, it does seem like they've added some significant um, portions into it. They've added a sort of an eviction portion where on a gang that has claimed a territory, they must be evicted to remove their influence. Now, any gang member within the territory will immediately become hostile. Nearby nearby gang lieutenants will arrange new plays and attempt to recapture the territory. So it is a sort of an interesting mishmash of features there. I'll put a link in the description below, but it may be worth taking another look if you have the game at this point. Again, I don't recommend early access games on most cases, with the exception of Darkest Dungeon, which you should go out and buy right now. But, you know, it is a, for those who have bought it, you know, being part of that process and seeing the game evolve is sort of interesting. And I die right here, so didn't do so well over over the long run at this point. But hey, you know, I hadn't played it in a while. Now, I would love to hear if people would like to see more of this series, see if they would like more news like this where I give an indie game and some news along with it. So leave your comments in the, the well, comment section below, I suppose. And I will see you all later. Enjoy your day and just keep on gaming.